5.30 and we're ready to start a regular meeting with a roll call, please. Commissioner Pack. Here. Commissioner Barwick. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Stecklin. Here. Mayor Asher. Here. Would you all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Item number three on the agenda is our placeholder for public comments or audience to visitors. So this is the opportunity for anybody from the general public that has uh, comments or business before the council to address the council subject to ordinance 3128 and 3134. Would anybody like to address the council at this time? Okay, seeing none move on to item number four which is our consent agenda we have items a through f tonight uh, before we have a motion and vote would any of you on the council like any of the items a through f removed from the consent agenda and voted upon separately anybody from the audience like any of those items removed from consent agenda and voted on separately okay entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda I'll make a motion to pass the consent agenda second Okay, any discussion, questions on any of these items? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item five under new business is a uh, bid for modifications at the library. We had a representative from the library that's going to explain this and where the money's coming from. So would you mind to come up to the podium? And speak real closely into the microphone we did for all of you on the council we had I have somebody from the public comment that they love that we upload these videos to YouTube but that we need that I specifically need to make sure that people come to the podium okay. because it's not easily heard on camera apparently so we're going to try to make an effort that's what that's about so speak directly into the microphone please well, good evening and thank you for having me here. My name is Sarah Watkins. I'm one of the co-interim directors at the Marion Carnegie Library right now. Um, tonight we're here and I would like to discuss an uh, interior renovation project that we received bids on. This project would be funded using the Mariella Aikman Endowment Fund and that was something given to us at the end of 2018. Mary Ella Aikman was a former member of Marion and she was here and uh, nervous. Um, she attended Marion School District and she graduated from Marion High School. She went on to SIU with her bachelor's and then University of Illinois for her master's and then after that she worked in family and child ecology. She specifically cared about uh, children development which is why when she passed she left us part of her endowment fund. She thought the library was very important to her. So the first uh, project that we wanted to complete with this would be an extension of our children's area and creating um, common spaces that we could use for children's and young adult programming. Uh, she did leave us $330,000 to be used. Um, and the renovation project was first bid out to be 59 dollars And then we did a few modifications, which included taking away some of our laptop counters that were installed because we could install those things at a later time. So the current bid from Ross Construction is $53,410. How much is it again? $53,410. Okay. <coughs> you guys have any questions about this? <coughs> this was bid out and with the competitive bidding process. See Ross with the one, but that was still Ross, right? 53. Yes. Reason I said we had 53 3 on our agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, it was a 53 4 that I had, um, but it was through Ross. Okay, 53 4 1 0. That's yes. the correct amount. Okay, what's the time frame? Three months. Well, I've got the wrong sheet. Mine's showing 59 9. And then, I'm sorry, I think that's what she was indicating is they made some. Say that again, Cody. I think the alternate bid on that bid path would be subtracted from the 59.9. Yeah, it looks like, looks like 
an alternate bid going was a was a deduct overall deduct. Okay. Yeah, page two's got that on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's not material, but just out of curiosity, do you know what the this does subtract out on this bid tabulation to fifty three three? Oh, does I'm very sorry. Well, no, I'm just saying oh. is the fifty three four ten and something else that changed or no? It was just the deduction of the alternative bid. So I may have calculated that incorrectly. Can you bring me your sheet? I just don't want to pass the it, wrong. It's the same as yours. Okay, good. So fifty three three. That answer your question, John. And then the project would be uh, three months. We've been working with base singer architecture. Okay, we would entertain a motion to uh, accept that low bid, please. I'll make a motion that we approve the low construction bid for Ross Construction for 53410 for modifications to the Marion County Library using dedicated endowment funds. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> okay, we can leave that as it stands. I do believe the correct math is 533 after all, but. Um, Want me to amend that to say either or? That's up to you. I'm, I'm very sorry. That's okay. You'll have to, uh, uh, what do they call it, retract his second or, or whatever you call that, and then you'll have to amend. Okay. Retract. Yes, I'll retract. I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll amend that to say approve the low construction bid for Ross Construction for either 53.3 or 53.4.10, whichever is correct, for modifications to the Marion Carnegie Library using dedicated endowment funds. I'll second that. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yes. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You want to come back more often so you're not nervous? Yeah, I would. I would love to. We can to. get y'all practiced up. I get a little nervous in front of our board, too, so I'm going to ah. do that with them later. <laughs> it's just Commissioner Stecklin that's tough. The rest of us are easy. <laughs> well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Brent, you're up. We're on item number six, sewer department. We've got two items, A and D tonight. You want to walk us through that, Brent? Yeah, a couple of uh, maintenance items, fairly large to, to large here. We need to discuss and get approval on to move forward with. Um, the first one we'll discuss is the um, the bid to line, the duct line pipe that supplies air to one of our uh, processes. It um, very bad shape. We dug up and did some uh, investigation just just not long ago and found that it is in terrible shape actually. We were going to, or we were basically changing pipe size to order pipe and, and move forward on a replacement level. Um, but we also found we've got a lot of other utilities passing over and through and it's just, it's gonna be very hard to excavate that. So we called Kevin uh, Scooter to, to give us a price on lining that line, which we've had very good success in the past on uh, very similar situations at our other treatment plant. Um, he's got the liner inside the line and it's, um, it, it's held up very well. Actually, the, the method we're looking at here with lining that will do a better job than replacing the, the ductile iron pipe um, just because we won't have to worry about gasket failure or anything like that. The price, um, just the material, material alone, pipe and concrete and rock, uh, came to about 16225 and the bid to line the pipe is 23040 so the difference in price is is not um, it, it's not great enough to keep us from going ahead and recommending the higher bid here because the the price for material doesn't even include labor and we would have a lot more downtime if we excavated and actually replaced so i'm recommending we um, approve his uh, bid there for twenty three thousand forty dollars to line that you're saying that the difference between the two in theory your your crew could do if we had the capacity to do it well, yeah, it's it's large ductile iron pipe. We actually replaced a small six-inch spur off of that um, last year, and it basically when we repaired that hole, it kind of pushed the problem to another spot. So we were looking at the ductile iron pipe to, to replace. Um, but like I said, the, the the situation we saw when we excavated the uh, what one major leak was, we had a lot of other utilities the incoming power to the plants right there. We think that and and really honestly. 
probably should need to, when we got the price for the pipe, we probably should have looked at aligning it right away without even doing anything because that uh, is going to give a lot better job, a longer lasting job. It's worked great at the other plant. So the bid you're asking us to approve is the 23040, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, so whoever, or you guys have any questions, but whoever reads this motion, let's include that amount in here because we've left it out. Looks like. I'd make a motion then to approve the bid from Scooter Construction to install a high temperature liner inside an 18 inch iron airline for $23,040, a budgeted item. I would second that. Okay, any questions of Brent on this item? <coughs> okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Steckland? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 6B is in Bravo. Okay, this, this next um, is, is, a, is a similar process. We've got a lot of deterioration of concrete at our West Plant Headworks. Um, and it, it's been ongoing. We've, we've tried to budget and get this project done for a few years, but other things have come up because it is a substantial amount of money here for a maintenance item. Um, but we need to do something because the problem is just getting worse and, and the, 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 the extent of the damage could cost us a lot more in the future if we don't do something now. We worked with a couple of different companies on this. Spectre Tech is the first company. And we've done business with them before. They do linings of manholes. We've had them do them around town. We've had good success with them. I think they'll probably do business in town again at some point. Um, so, and, and they said they were capable, and I know they're capable of lining uh, manholes. This is a, just another type process of getting this tank lined. The other um, company that we worked with was represented by Belzona, which is a, 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 the company itself. It's a composite industrial group. And they specialize in lining. Um, heavy industrial plants like steel mills and things like that uh, all, all over the country. The process is a little bit different for each one of them, um, but the cost for Spectre Tech's work is significantly cheaper, and I, they carry a 10-year warranty, and we've done work with them before. Like I said, I think they'll be back in town. I trust them that, that they will get the job done correctly, and it'll be a, a long-lasting solution to get that tank rehabbed and lined. So, do we have some pause between the two different methods? I mean, are you are you implying that? Well, the I I think that with with the uh, composite industrial group, they they are just they're from out of the area, far out of the area. I think they're over in Indiana somewhere, and um, possibly the the material that they're using the line may be more expensive. I don't know. They're sandblasting versus pressure washing, and they're containing that kind of like they're doing the water tower. I think just their process of getting it done is just more expensive. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's any better uh, in talking to the two. So, uh, like I said, we've, we've done work with Spectre Tech. They're going to save us a little bit of money here. So I think that's what I would recommend going with is, is Spectre Tech. Looked to me like, Brent, when I was looking over the bids, that the Spectre Tech required less of us. Yeah, that, that is another thing. They bring their own their own backer to remove debris. Um, it, it did seem a little bit more palatable to us as a work crew to have them come in and do it than uh, Bell's on the or the positive industrial floor. Just one note, both of these were budgeted items and they have been for a few years, so I just wanted to get that in the record. Okay, any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 7A, I want to note we have a typo in here, make sure I'm saying it. Right, instead of 2006 edition of the International Fire Code, that should be 2018, is that correct? Right. Okay. So, Wendy can come up and talk about this. And while we're at it, got another typo on the very next item. That 3648 should be 3654. Same issue, but we put the wrong number in there. Okay, Wendy. 
this is just updating the, the codes that we adopt, the uh, International Codes Council. They do the, the NFPA, the Life Safety Code, um, the International Fire Code. These are just the codes that our Building and Code Services Department goes by for some of the building codes and the Life Safety Code. And then, of course, the fire codes that our fire department goes by. The state has updated the versions that they use, so we're just kind of following along, updating the versions that we use as well. Just since we've been talking about codes in the last couple of meetings, let's just reiterate this has really nothing to do with that discussion right, per se. Right, this is completely different than the property maintenance code, which was discussed at the previous meeting. Which we're still working on. Right. But I think there was attached kind of an explanation of what's different in the updated version of the life safety code, just to kind of give you an idea. Does anybody have any questions? Like to make the motion. I accept the motion to approve ordinance 3652 amending the fire code by adopting the 2018 edition of the International Fire Code and the 2015 edition of the NFPA 101 Life Safety Code. I would second that. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 8. We have several. Um, related items, which are all good. People doing stuff. Looks like that's A through E. Um, you've had those in your packets. I don't know. Did I understand you right when you said A should be 3654? Correct. Okay. A should read approved ordinance 3654 as opposed to what's typed, which is 3648. separate motions on each one of these? I would. I okay. Would. Okay. There you go again. I would make the recommendation to approve <laughs> ordinance number 3654 amending a redevelopment agreement to add additional developers to have incurred eligible costs within the project. I would second that. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 8B. I make the motion to approve the ordinance 3649 authorizing, authorizing the redevelopment agreement with the Robbins Nest Learning Center Incorporated for a project in the residential kit. Second that. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Okay, item 8C. I would make a motion to approve ordinance 3650 authorizing a redevelopment agreement with landscaping by Chris Sollers, LLC, for a new project in the residential kit. Second that. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 8D. I would uh, approve. Approve ordinance 3651, make a motion authorizing the redevelopment agreement with Marion Self Storage LLC for a project in the hub. <coughs> I'll second that. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 8E. I make a motion to approve ordinance 3653, authorizing the redevelopment agreement with JH Leasing LLC for a project. I'll second that. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. I, F and G <laughs> both look like uh, uh, stop requests, three way stop requests. So is there any fact up information on these? Is that why you're here? Yeah. Uh, I know what the first one is, but on the 
Dewdrop and Folgers, how did that one come about? Well, we added phase 11, so it's a lot longer uh, okay. run through there, so we need a break in it. So okay. the, the, the neighbors had petitioned to me wanting to put up a um, three-way stop. Okay. Now the Norman Road project is where? Where the new development's going to go there, um, right past Quail Run. It's one of the concerns, just to slow the traffic down there. The entrance to the new development, gotcha. so you have and a three-way sure stop there. They don't all pull out yeah. and stop the traffic. Hey, Jeff, a quick question. I, I don't know if this is city or this is county. I'm sorry, thanks, Doug. But Norman Road, you know the part I'm talking about where there is a bar barricade on the east side of that road? Across from Roking Road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that the drop off right, I mean, it drops instantly about a foot? So if somebody gets a tire off there, the barricade's about a foot and a half off the road, but there's there's a huge drop right there. Somebody gets tied off, they're down, and you know they're not getting out of it. Yeah. I don't know if that's a county road, if it's a city maintained road. It's Norman's us. So. It is. Yeah, up to Spring Garden is us. Okay, I didn't know if there was ever any. You're talking about where Broking terminates yeah. across from that, yeah. right before you go back into. Uh, to you're your talking about parallel with Norman Road, though, mm -hmm. like you're driving parallel. down. If you're going north. Sorry, Spring Garden. It's the it's the it's the what call it a barricade or a barrier guardrail. guardrail on the right. You'll notice a small side of the street on too. Side. Okay. It's not real long because of the utilities we had in there. We had a small offset that used to be just an open ditch there. We put in a new uh, guardrail about five years ago. Yeah. So we had to work the posts around the utilities there. So the reason I noticed is I was heading out to my daughter's the other day and a large truck was coming at me and I had to get as far away as I could and I looked and I'm like. We can, goes off, I'm down. Huh? we can check it for shoulder, put, yeah. put some rock on the shoulder. Yeah, okay. so. <clears throat> Somebody want to make a motion on 8F? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve a three-way stop request for entrance to the 1310 Norman Road project. Second F. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. And then item G? Make a motion to approve three way stop at the request of adjacent neighbors at the intersection of Dewdrop and Folgers Drive in Morningside subdivision. I can second that. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Berwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Doug. Um, is Glenn here? Yeah. Glenn, you want to come up and talk about this? Uh, Demolition tabulation. I think I gave all of you a pit tab sheet and a, a sheet attached to that <coughs> for the uh, bids for the demolition of the Palakai building and the uh, MBR building. <coughs> and as you can see, we had three bids ranging from Fifty-seven thousand three forty-eight to one hundred twenty-four thousand six seventy-five. Made quite a spread, and uh, and uh, I did make a phone call to the low bidder of the of Green Track. He hadn't really inspected the building. He came down this afternoon. We went through it um, and went back and revisited his bid. And he said that after revisiting his bid, he had left off the asbestos removal, which is part of the contract. And I said, well, how much was that? And he said, 18500 <clears throat> But uh, I said, we can't negotiate or add to it. I said, you either take it for fifty-seven, or you withdraw your bid. And he said, and if you see the attached email there, he is with requesting his bid to be withdrawn. Which puts us to the next bidder, which would be Earth Services from Benton, Illinois. And they bid 103, 600, which is a, I thought was a good representative bid. And subject to them signing an agreement or two, he's ready to take the job on. And he said he could do it in two to three weeks. You guys might recall getting 35% of this amount paid for with a, a grant. That's correct. 
thirty five percent so sixty five percent of this the grant is maxed out at ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars from r t a so if we if we run over the budgeted number they are still stuck at ninety nine thousand nine ninety nine but it's we're going to do it in phases so if we let the contract for one or three they'll pay thirty well after we pay the contractor we'll ask r t a to reimburse us thirty five percent of the cost and then we go to the next phase whatever building the parking lot then we ask you pay the contractor then they reimburse us up to ninety nine thousand nine ninety nine Yes. And that's the only thing that's really left to hear. I can't believe I can hear it. Okay, somebody wants to put this on a form of a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the bid for demolition of Poly Chi and Mary and Betty buildings uh, to Earth Services uh, for a total price of $103,600. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 9, we've got uh, three parcels of property there that's in your packet. The city's looking to purchase A, B, and C. Three separate motions, I suppose. I'd make a motion to approve the execution of the purchase of contract for building located at 107 South Franklin Street. I had a question on that one, Wendy. Maybe you can help me out. The except the strip of equal width, 26 feet wide, off and across the north side, is there an alley in there now? Yeah, there's one maybe over there on the front of the house on the side. Mm-hmm. The legal description for yeah. the alley building. Yeah. There's a strip. Yeah, there's a little alley that goes through. And I think that that was the exception of the new. <coughs> the 26 foot front of the city when they bought their lot we got 26 feet off that other piece but it says it's off the south side but there's no alley there the alley runs north and south the alley is between Pali Kai building and the MVR building and it runs up and dead ends into the city parking lot but the 26 foot accepted map is off of the, the piece of the lot that goes belongs to the city already building in this building if you, if you look at those lots are 85 by 50 okay the Donnelly building that we're buying is that not the old um, Legion, building. Legion building yes that's the old American Legion building but there's not 26 feet in width between that building and Brown's is there the 26 foot is off of the south side of the Legion building but it says in the description off the north side. That's my that's my question, I guess. It says lot one in block eight, except a strip of equal width, twenty six feet wide off. Twenty six feet wide off and across the north side thereof, and except a strip of equal width, fifteen feet wide off and across the south side. Yeah, it's, it's, it's John Brown. And then the 15 would be off the south side. Of there. So lot one, south. lot one was was John Brown, the American Legion, and what is now well, that parking lot in between yeah. the American Legion building and Mary Bay. Now it makes sense. So all of those three combined were lot one. Yeah. That well, that's what I'm reading. That, I makes, sense. that makes sense. I thought that makes sense. I think that's what this is saying. I got it. Thank you. I kept looking at it and think there's no, that's not 26 feet either. That may confuse you. Really? Really? That doesn't make sense. Okay. We had a motion. I don't think we had a second. A second that. That's okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 9B. Bravo. I make a motion that we uh, approve the execution of a purchase contract for property located at 103 Fourth Street. I'll second that. And roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner 
Berwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 9C. I make a motion to approve the execution of a purchase contract for a property located at 104 East Marion Street. Second that. And roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Berwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 9D, um, I know we've had lots of grant programs come through here. Just to clarify this, uh, Celeste and the county, I believe, are applying for this one too. This is very similar to the $450,000 or $75,000 grant we got for the, uh, I think it was 50, 12 or 15 homes <coughs> in the Midway, Duncan, Eisenhower. Same grant, just more money. Same grant, but it's it's more money, so it's another... 500 and so some odd thousand dollars that they're applying for be very similar type of a program up to forty five thousand dollars per uh, residence per applicant for safety and and uh, health life safety type items on their home so that's what that's about so they need us to res make a resolution to support that application I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2020-53 a resolution of support for community development block grant program grant. And second that. Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Berwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stefflin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Under Commissioner Reports, uh, Mr. Stefflin, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, August Water Department, we had two new service taps, three water main breaks, two service leaks, two services were upgraded. Installed a dry hydrant for the fire department with the permission of South Lake Estates. Uh, swore the fire department can utilize lake water to fight fires. Uh, started back laying the new six inch water main on Logan Street from DeYoung to Clark. One announcement coming up, the water department will be starting the flushing of water mains through fire hydrants starting September 28th. Uh, we'll be starting in the southwest quadrant of the city first, then the northwest the northeast, and lastly, the southeast. Each quadrant will take approximately two weeks. The water department facility on North Madison Street is the axis of all those quadrants, so it's not Tower Square. You may experience what looks to be a little dirty water, but this is safe, no one needs to be alarmed. It should go away after a few hours. If it does not, contact the water department and we will be happy to address the situation. Uh, I also just want to point out the City of Marion for the month of August used just under 60 million gallons of water, which is an average of 1.92 million gallons per day. That's all I got. That's pretty good. We've decided that we're going to just put that, we, we can't overload everyone with trivia <laughs> twice a month. So I'm we're just so going to disappointed. Do, we're going to do once a month <laughs> trivia. It'll become, you know. So the second meeting of every month we can anticipate. Well, I don't know if we'll do it first or second, but <laughs> once a month. Don't want to overload everyone. <laughs> I, for one, am very disappointed. I'm sorry. Had I known you would be this point, I would have had this for you. Jim? Yeah, I'd just like to say, uh, kudos to the street department, the square, how it looks. Uh, we got uh, our own crews came in and did the crack ceiling and cleaning. Got the old prep work and had the contractor come in and see what kind of gives it a new vibrant look around the square. So we appreciate the, the hard work on that. Uh, other than that, uh, still cleaning ditches, uh, some sidewalk issues, and just trying to get things ready for this winter. So we hope it's an easy one. And they also cleaned and scrubbed the brick on the tower, which was actually probably a bigger, might have been a bigger job. There were several different chemicals you had to search through to figure out something that would work, right? Finally found the magic one. Yeah, and it looks a lot better. I also want to let you know, report the power the power on the square for the events is going well. We've got all the boxes mounted and yeah. we're moving, moving forward. We're doing good. So. Okay, uh, Mr. Barwin. The activity, activity report for the Marion Police Department for August 2020, we had 15 city ordinance violations, 13 warrant arrests, 328 incidents reported, 103 traffic accidents, 4 DUIs. Uh, during the month of August, there were 4,859 dispatch calls, 2,713 911 calls, and 204 ambulance calls. The Marion Police Department Narcotics Unit, August 1st through August 31st, had 15 cases initiated, 
two confidential sources interviewed, five controlled drug purchases, purchases of methamphetamine or cocaine, four state arrests, three federal arrests, two search warrants, one firearm was seized, 1.08 kilos of cocaine, 16.7 pounds of cannabis, 10.82 grams of methamphetamine, and $9,840 United States currency was seized. The Marion Police Department Detective Unit, we had two aggravated battery cases, one aggravated firearm, one battery, three burglary, one counterfeit case, two criminal damage cases, three death investigation, three forgery, one fraud, one homicide, one intimidation, two cases missing person, one recovered stolen property, two sex offenses, four theft of motor vehicles, five theft under, one case theft under, I'm sorry, five cases theft over, one case theft under, one case unlawful use of weapons, one case unlawful of credit card, and three cases vehicle burglary. Total of 39 cases were assigned. And the Marion Fire Department had nine fire calls, 10 rescue EMS, 10 hazardous conditions where there was no fire, 12 service calls, eight good intent calls, 20 activated alarms for a total of 69. else to come before the council? Okay, I don't know of any reason to go into executive session unless you guys do. There aren't any, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Me. I'll second. Roll call please. Commissioner Patton? Yes. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absent. Yay. Thank you all.